Hello everyone, this is Scott with US Ignite again. Today I'm going to cover an introduction to networking in Docker. Uh, we've come quite a way so far. Uh, we've come around how to run uh, containers, how to, how to manipulate images, uh, some Docker file information, and a few other things like that. And central all to this though is uh, to get a real application running, you want to connect containers in some meaningful way. So you need to network them in some way. Uh, Docker just actually upgraded its uh, networking uh, protocols this year uh, in version, I think it was so 110. Everything prior to that uses uh, their previous paradigm for networking was that each Docker container when it was spun up, if it had any named uh, linked containers to it, it would modify the, the Etsy's host file with that information. And it would uh, it would sort of mimic it that way. Post uh, 110, I think the current version as of this this broadcast is 1.11. They move to a, a embedded DNS server inside the Docker host, inside the Docker machine, so the um, so that containers can uh, can undergo things like service discovery and so forth that wasn't available previously. Uh, I'll cover a little bit of the previous. Uh, syntax that might have, you might see in a lot of the Docker Compose or some of the Docker uh, uh, Docker examples that you'll see out there, it's called linking, but that's considered deprecated now. Uh, you've probably heard me say several times in these demonstrations that Docker is aggressively updated, uh, always for the better. So it's evolving rapidly and uh, very, and the engineering is improving dramatically in leaps and bounds, uh, even over just periods of a couple of months. Networking got a big overhaul um, and it's part of this uh, idea to split out components in Docker into these componentized items. I think they call them uh, plumbing, split out, split out plumbing is the, the term. I hear them use quite often. And uh, so that said, it can support a great number of platforms. There's, it supports modification a lot better. Uh, it's just better practices and better code and easier to maintain. So <clears throat> this is another step by the Docker folks to improve the Docker ecosystem itself. And I'm gonna cover a little bit today about networking and how we generally do it. Okay, so what you've been seeing so far in the previous uh, tutorials I've been doing is when I spin up, when I do a Docker run on a container and these are all my happy little containers sitting out there. Um, <clears throat> let's say this is an example app you might have. There's a web app container that runs the HTML code and then let's say Python code it's running in it or Ruby or whatever. Uh, that's connecting to a separate container. That's uh, a database that stores all the data it might have a data volume, so uh, it can persist that data if it needs to. Maybe as well, it's running some worker process in addition to the um, to the database. So it needs, let's say, a Redis server. That's a third container that runs by itself. And maybe even in and amongst all this, we need uh, a, a separate container that does nothing but actually uh, process the worker uh, the worker queue. So there's a bunch of worker processes running in a fourth container even. Up till now, the only way you would have had to do that is expose these ports in each one of these containers. So you have to both expose them and map them. That's what that dash P is, if you remember, um, you have, to the host system. So these are all joined to the host system as uh, as ports, and they're all accessible by anyone who can access the system as well. And that's often inadequate. We're, we're sort of moving to a world where software-defined networks are more desirable. They provide better security. And really, if you're going to sandbox all all these apps with Docker uh, in these containers, what's the point of having thing, everything exposed to the public anyway? Um, granted, there's a little bit of, of a higher level of security because you have to explicitly map ports from the outside world to specific ports on the container. So in that way, it sort of operates like a, a strange firewall of, of a sorts. But even then, why expose anything at all to the outside world? So that's what the idea of networking is. What networking will allow you to do is, is let service discovery work between, between containers within a defined network in the Docker host. So sort of, let's say this example here, the same example of a web app with a database, a Redis server and some worker, pro another container with worker processes. We could take that little red box and define a network that maybe only included the Redis server, the database and the web app, and only exposed a port from the web app out to the public so that we isolated the web tier out from the database tier. And maybe we even had a second network that the only things in those were the Redis, uh, were the Redis container and the worker process this container so that they're even further separated out from the from the web app there's actually no uh, publicly accessible way to get over to the worker processes you'd have to go through the, web, uh, the redis server 
obviously so uh the first thing it probably occurs to you is that still means the web app and the date and the database behind it are still open to things like uh sql injection attacks and things like that but it still it provides a higher level of security against direct hacks against the the containers themselves um anyway so you can do that fairly effectively with these uh networking strategies in docker there's even ways to get out of a single host. What I'm going to show you today deals with everything on a single host, but you can put in overlay networks to allow for service discovery and container interactions uh, between multiple hosts. That's getting into something called a Docker swarm, and that really uh, it goes beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do here today. But there are lots of tools available to really approach these containers in a safe and secure way to isolate them to where they need to be and provide sort of software defined network like features all within Docker without having to get into your own host at all. So that's uh, that's something I think is, is is reasonable, and let's go ahead and show today how we might do some of that. So let me exit out of my presentation, and we'll do a good bit of command line stuff. First, there's a there's good document good documentation uh, uh, on the the new networking paradigm over on Docker itself. Be aware, there's really two pages uh, you have to go to. It says Docker Container Networking. You want to read through that. You also want to go to Working with Docker uh, Network Commands. Uh, and then configure to container DNS and user defined networks. Those are uh, three pages. So it's a little bit more complex uh, than linking previously, but it's gonna be important to get to know this. You should start using it right away because it's much more flexible also, uh, and it works much better, let's say in something like Docker Compose, Docker Compose, uh, which I'll do later sessions on is, much, is moving heavily towards that. And, and uh, if you know what this, paradigm is, you'll get less confused when you see legacy paradigm stuff like the linking, uh, as I said. So make sure you're taking a moment to read on through this and uh, know what's going on. Okay, so let's go over and let's start doing some command line stuff. So Docker networks are, actually I might have old networks here. Um, Docker network is a, is a command you'll use to interact with networks. So let me show you, you can create, connect, disconnect, inspect, list, or remove a network. Um, and actually, I don't think I removed the ones I was doing with tests before, so we might get an early chance to do that. So I have a Docker network list. Um, it actually, there's more networks here than you need, so I'm going to remove a few. Back tier that you see and D network demo and NSQ, those are some uh, sp the networks that I defined here locally when I was going through my, my run through before the show on practice. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those just to get down to the base image again. So uh, Docker, uh, uh, Docker network RM, as you see above here, that's the way to remove a network. So Docker network RM, let me remove D network demo. NSQ and Docker network remove back to here. Okay, Docker network. So listing the, uh, these are the default networks that come on every uh, every Docker host. So you'll have Bridge, which is the default network for everything. All, everything we've been putting on it is Bridge. It has a network interface. If you were to inspect the containers, you can see the Bridge network interface. Um, there's Host Network, which deals with the host the, the hosting machines network. And then there's no, None, which provides no networking interface whatsoever. Um, so, um, and there's reasons why you might want to do that for things that are spinning up security and you don't need access to the outside world, but 99% of the time you're going to be using a bridge network. Additionally, there's ways to develop plugins for Docker so that you can develop your own robust networking. So, uh, uh, so, so layer two networks or software defined networks, there are plugins out there that exist for Docker to let, let, let containers operate the, over those independently. Uh, so those are very, very interesting, although for me, it looks a little complex to get into right now, so I'm not going to. But know they exist. If you're doing anything highly secure, uh, and you need to get into sort of layer two connected containers or, um, or something like that, there are plugins that allow you to do that. And if you're messing with anything like Onos or any sort of SDN orchestration software, um, there's a lot, uh, there's some plugins out, out there as well for Docker containers that will let you put them on a SDN and use them in the paradigm that, S that SDN is expecting. Um, so, that's, uh, so that's something to be aware of. Okay, so we've gone, and one thing is inspect too. So let me go ahead and um, Docker inspect, oh, excuse me, network inspect. 
Bridge. So let's take a look at Bridge for a second. Um, some of the information you get back, and some of you might uh, might be used to Docker. Docker, I think it's called ins Docker Inspect itself, and you have to parse out with some JSON parser some of the data there. This is a lot easier to get networking information out of. Um, all of these networks come. So this is the default Bridge. It comes with its own subnet. Every time you go and add a new user-defined network, and I'll show you one in a, uh, shortly here, um, it provides its own subnet to, uh, to that network alone. So only containers in that subnet can get on the, that, uh, uh, that's those subnet IPs. Um, containers can belong to multiple um, IP numbers. So, uh, so I mean, both multiple networks. So they might end up having multiple IP numbers within the context of an individual network, and that's a, that's an intended feature, and it makes it more secure. But the easy way to find out of what's on it is just go ahead and network and inspect the individual network you're looking for. Um, that should help out quite a bit. All right. So let me go ahead and I'm going to create a network. Uh, well, actually, let me put up something to show you how this will work with uh, with just a standard Docker container. So if you remember yesterday, I, I was working on um, a web interface to show you sort of Docker files and how that goes. And I'm going to use that file again. So I had Docker run. I'm going to demonize. I'm going to name it public web and I'm calling it um, DF demo. I'm, I'm using that image. So uh, I need to expose that port to the public. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and I got the wrong command here. Excuse me. And this is a Flask application, and I had, I'm going to do a similar paradigm to what I was doing yesterday. I'm mapping host port 80 to the container port 5000, which is the default port for Flask. So if I hit um, if I hit return on that, it's going to start start the container Docker PS. You can see the container running. If I go over to my web app, if I were to let's say load this file here, uh, that's already the cache from it before. So this is running on port 80 on the host machine. Um, again, this is Docker Toolbox on Windows, which is why you're seeing that that IP number instead of the home IP. But anyway, uh, so that Flask app loads this web page and brings it back just fine. It's running on. I mapped the container to uh, port. 5000 to host port 80, which is why it runs as a normal web page. If I go back and inspect it, inspect that network docker, I can't type today, um, docker network inspect um, bridge. The default bridge. You can see now the con that actual container is listed in this bridge network. It gives its its, its IP4 address. This is uh, you'll see that this IP4 address is actually different from the uh, the host address, and that's because it's on the subnet here of this bridge network. The only reason it's visible for my machine is I've prov provided that port argument. So that's uh, that's some of the reasoning there. Um, so let's say I go ahead and. Instead, I wanted to put it on a, a define my own network. So if we look again at, uh, at networking, actually, before I do that, let me back up. Um, let's go ahead and show you how to find ports on a container. So uh, what we've been using up to now is Docker PS, and it brings back the details about a running container. If I did dash A, it would give all containers. And this shows that port 80 is mapped uh, on the host is mapped to port 5000 on the container. I can also do Docker Docker ports and give it the name of the container. So public web, oops, I think it's Docker port actually. I would figure this out. I shouldn't do these late at night. Um, yeah, so if I do Docker port public web, um, that gives me the, the same information, but this actually annoyed me at first. So it's a little quirk and something to be aware of. Uh, you'll see the notation up here on PS ports gives you the host port first and what is mapped to on the, um, on the, the container. When you do this, it gives you the container port first and what host port that is mapped to. So uh, I find that a little confusing, but it's just a little quirk of the system. So just be aware of that as you kind of um, work with these ports and, and use these commands to, to get a picture of what's going on with your containers. So let's go ahead back. Uh, I was gonna go ahead and run another container. So let me define a, a simple network and I'll call Docker network create. Um, and I'll call this closed web. 
So if I create a network called closed web, um, you can see it listed in the in those hosts. Um, that actually that oh if you don't provide a type a driver for the network it defaults to bridge by the way you can see that's what happened there so let me go ahead and i'll take a similar uh command to the one i just gave and if i were to run uh run something on that it will um got the wrong command here so Oh, I'm in the wrong window. Um, what it will do is run on that network. I'm going to take these ports out. If I provide net closed web, it will run on that container. Uh, oh, I already I gave it the wrong name. So I had a name collision there. I meant to call this closed web. Uh, it will run as a separate container. Uh, so the container itself is running, but you'll see nothing is mapped. So there's nothing I can do to get to that um, uh, to get to that that, that web page. Uh, there's not a great way to show it, but um, there's no way to ping. You see, there's no IP number or host port associated with it. So Docker remove. If you provide Docker remove, by the way, with an F command, it'll it'll shut down a running container. Uh, I think you've seen normally you have to stop it and then do something uh, and then uh, remove it. But uh, Docker F closed. Right. right. So I'm back to my original uh, container. All right. Um, one of the other things is uh, actually the more effective de demonstration of that, I think, will be to put something on the, um, the NUN network. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do this command. So this is Docker run uh, demonized again, name closed web again. Um, I'm mapping port 8080 on the host to port 5000 on the container. But in this case, I'm using an explicit network of telling it to use the none network. And I'm using that same image. So I'll hit return here. If I go uh, to try to load port 8080 on this, I should get nothing. So that should time out in a second. And that's because the none network provides no network interface. So if you're putting things in there, even if you're providing port numbers, they will not map to anything. So that's an important, um, that's an important distinction to realize. Uh, even if you look down here, there are uh, that con that container is marked here. It has no address though, because there's no network interface, and you'll see that there's no subnet reserved for that none interface as well. So there's nothing going to happen there. It's a good place to put if you really need something secure that maybe just outputs to a data volume or does something like that, uh, or it's just a data volume itself. That's a great place to put those so that they're secure and isolated from the other containers. All right. So as I mentioned, the um, there's no service uh, discovery protocol in place with the normal bridge, but if you use a custom defined network, you will find that that is the case. So uh, let me go ahead and create a um, create a network. I'm going to call it back tier. Provide Docker network list. Yeah, it shows me back to your closed web is still there. Um, oh, that's something I really don't need. So I'm going to actually close that out. So Docker remove. Oh. So we're back to just Docker, the, the standard one and Docker tier. So let me go ahead and start my Flask app again. All right, it started with no, um, uh, with no, nothing associated with no, no IPs, nothing like that. So I won't be able to get to it. Um, and the default port of 80 won't be mapped to anything. So if I Docker, that I have three containers running, closed web is still running. I'll go ahead and shut that down in a second. Um, you can see Flask app is running uh, that has port 5000, but it is not mapped to anything. I didn't provide a P flag at all. And if I were to um, go ahead and try to ping Flask app, let's say I'm using a BusyBox uh, to, to run and ping. 
this might be worth noting. Uh, I'm running Docker run, and you see that new flag is dash dash rm. That means when a container, if you remember, if a container has a uh, foreground, foreground process, once that foreground ground process exits, the container exits itself. So but, but by providing dash dash rm, that tells uh, Docker to remove the container right away then rather than just go into uh, exit status. So I'm gonna try to ping that Flask app. Uh, I named the, the app, uh, that app Flask app and see if I can get it to come back with anything for me. So it tells me bad address, which is what I would expect. And let me go ahead and Docker. I'll remove the Flask app so I don't get any, um, uh, so I don't get any, uh, anything that collides with what I'm doing here. So Docker, uh, Docker remove F. And this is that trick I use for for removing a bunch of containers all at once. Might help if I got the command right. There we go. What am I doing wrong? Docker PS, oops, PQ, sorry. Um, I meant AQ or QA, didn't matter. Um, sorry, I get the command wrong. So PSQ, uh, which means you just get the ID numbers and all of them, which means even stop one. So Docker PS gives me nothing. All right, let's go back and Docker. So let me actually show you putting something on a separate network and how that's going to work for us. Docker network LS. I got back to here on here. Let me go back over here. Let me provide that same um, command I did before. So Flask app, I'm going to get that running again on, uh, on, on the uh, in the container. I have not provided it with any uh, network connection, so it's just sitting out there by itself. You'll see five, uh, port 5000, so there's nothing to connect to. Now, after it's up, I can add it to a network manually by providing Docker network connect, the name of the network back to here and flask app is the name of the container that i'm connecting so if i do that this time if i inspect back here uh, you can see that that uh, that that container is now in here it's within the subnet of this uh the range of the back here so it's running just fine so where I had to try to ping that, I think I showed you that a little earlier. Uh, let me just show you again. If I were to try to ping it by its name, by the container name Flask app, you would expect that I would get nothing, obviously. Um, and I'm gonna remove it again. So if I ping, it just tells me bad address. I can't get anything. Likewise, if I try to, uh, well, there's no port map, so it's no useless for me to show you that. Um, so uh, if I were, to, but if I add it to that container, uh, if I add it to the, um, this, app that's going to do the ping to the same network, and I can do that at runtime, service discovery will allow that container to discover the Flask app container by its by its container name. So in this case, I'm doing Docker run, um, you know, still using the remove flag for when it's done running, it will remove itself. And I'm using this dash dash net to add this at runtime to the back tier network. Uh, it's BusyBox again, and doing ping five times in the Flask app. So when I hit that, this time it's, it recognizes that name. So service discovery, because it's part of the same defined network in, uh, um, in Docker on this Docker host, it knows by the container name where it's at and has that access to it. So it's able to do that. Um, likewise, if I wanted to curl, let's say, and get, uh, get the web page that you were able to see earlier um, output to my, uh, to my screen here, I get it. Now, I can't show you that in a web browser because nothing is able to access that, that container or that page except things inside the network. My host machine isn't in the network, so there's no real way to get there. So that's the only way to do it. It's a good way to have containers that need to operate and, I, and be isolated from the public to be able to interop with one another. Um, so um, having gone through the curl, I can, uh, there's a few other ways to do this as well. There's a, you can do this as, uh, through what's called the Docker compose file as well. So let me go ahead and list the networks. 
and you can see it's back here, host bridge, blah, blah, blah. Uh, using a Docker, um, using a Docker compose file, I'm gonna pull one over the window here. And I'm gonna to get to that in a different, um, in a different uh, lesson. And uh, I'm gonna do a, a demo on it next week at our conference. I'm also gonna do a, uh, a bit about it uh, in another video. I might get to that before the conference, but I'm not quite sure. Um, what this compose file does, it's letting me define a network down here. I'm gonna call that network, uh, I'm using the bridge driver for it. It defaults to it, I, I don't necessarily need that, but I'm gonna call it NSQ. And there's some magic stuff you'll see happening related to where this Docker Compose file sits. I'm going to bring up three separate images. This is for a worker processes, a worker process called NSQ. Um, and this is going to bring up a uh, router to, to manage uh, producers, uh, excuse me, consumers, and uh, so that you automatically find them. It's going to manage the, the consumer itself, and it's going to manage the um, NSQ admin interface that you'll see a web tier through. So you can see through here, there's no ports exposed in any of these directives. There's only only here are there. So while they were all exist inside this NSQ uh, network, because that's what I'm specifying down here, um, they're able to access they're able to access one another by their link names, by the names of their 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 containers. And uh, the only one that actually has any public facing interface whatsoever is this NSQ admin, which will be a web interface. And we'll see that in a second. So if I go over, yeah, actually, let me use a different interface here. So make sure I'm the right. So my Docker, and this isn't intended for you to understand it in this broadcast, just shows more networking components. Docker compose up. It will run through everything and NSQ pops up. All three containers are running. So if I go back over to my other command line and I Docker PS. It gives me all the containers you can see. All, these are all from NSQ. They all have different commands, though, so they're starting different processes. And they all have different sets of, of, of uh, IPs mapped to map, but none of them have anything mapped to the, uh, to the host except for this interface here, which uh, extends off the page so you really can't see it. But uh, it's only this one NSQ admin that does. So going back over here, if I were to, let's say, refresh this, then I get my NSQ uh, look here. There's nothing in the streams. No topics have been published yet. And matter of fact, because the the um, the consumer is is actually located not, uh, off the network, there's no no way I can send anything to the consumer. So this just would let me monitor the results for the admin interface on what's going on. But there's no way for me to interact from outside that uh, that user defined network in Docker. Um, there's no way for me to interact with the queue. So what I'm going to do instead. I'm gonna go back and grab some of my prepared script here and pull out a command to curl a command to that um, to that instance. So I'm using a separate uh, separate Docker instance here and it's uh, Docker run, I'm removing it again. In this case, and actually I probably should have done that before. Hold on, Docker network list to show you what's happening. So you'll see a new network here that was spawned by Docker Compose. And that's what I mean by the naming scheme, this D network demo. It's based on the the folder of that that holds a Docker Compose. By default, there's ways to override that. But um, but so that's why you see that weird name. But NSQ, you see the name I defined in the file. So that is the network that those containers are sitting on. Nothing else in any of these other networks can, can interact with it. The only thing that can happen publicly is the one that has an exposed port, uh, which is over here. So knowing that now, I'm going to run a curl command to send, to queue a message into, um, into the listener there. So I'm going to do Docker run again, remove when it's done running. I'm giving it the network declaration of uh, putting it on network demo NSQ. And then I'm using the appropriate curl image to send a curl command with low world out to the, um, to the, the, that consumer. So you see here, I'm using the actual name from the, um, from the container that I had before. So here's NSQ, that's its container name. So it's able to recognize that container by its container name because it's in the same network. So if I do that, I'm just gonna put it in a topic called uh, back to your MQ. If I do that, it's a successful result. If I go back out to the web page and I hit refresh, I have a topic of back to your MQ, there's one message in there. So that message was sent. And I can do that repeatedly if I want, send more messages and just keep sending them until I run out of uh, patience with it. And that sends it all in if I were to refresh this page. 
you see there's five messages in here now and um, and so because I'm putting stuff into that network it's interacting with it so this way I can separate let's say a web tier that might be sending requests from uh, from the database itself uh, I can put that uh, if there was a fronting web page let's say they, let's say like that web app and it was in the network it could be only exposed let's say through port 80 for user requests and only be able to interact through some backend scripting uh, and the uh, the DNS server inside the docker host so that's a way to sort of separate and achieve that sort of separate of, of containers that we're looking at uh, for security. All right, so, um, and just to show you uh, for completeness, so that container is there. If I were to try to reach that container in any other way, so let's say I did something like, hmm, well, there's nothing I can do to ping it, actually. I'm trying to think of an example. How do you provide a, neg a negative example in this case? Um, there's nothing I could do to ping that, uh, ping that container so it, it is completely isolated um, if I were to let's say um, run this command let's try oh so I know what you're saying so so we've seen uh, we've been accessing web pages over the um, over the host IP uh, 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 previous to this. So let's say instead we wanted to try to curl that same page, assuming it was on port 5000 because we know it's on and we're, we, we do not belong to that network. If I, if I do it, it failed to connect. There's nothing there. So I can't even connect through the regular port to get back some of these web application things. Um, that's an important, um, and even if I go back to, let's say, another network, let's say the back to your network, that's also isolated. So if I do that, nothing will come back for me. So that's essentially how the how you go about isolating components from one another and how you end up linking containers. Um, it's it's fairly easy to do conceptually. What the hardest thing is just keeping track of what's in what network. Uh, once you start getting into things like Docker Compose file for this, uh, it makes it a lot easier, which is why I wanted to just peek at it. Um, to doing this all by command line and trying to figure out what is in what container, that's a bit, it's a bit much to keep in your head, especially if it's a service that's running for a while. You really want to resort to things like Docker Compose, especially when you start getting into multiple containers, running into multiple different uh, user-defined networks. But it's a very powerful feature. It separates these containers from, uh, from one another in a very secure way. Um, it lets you isolate concerns for your application into the appropriate location. And it really provides you a lot of flexibility in, in terms of bringing up other containers into that uh, um, into those uh, user-defined networks because they, there's automatic service discovery associated with them, but there is not on the default bridge. All right, so that's our bit about Docker networking. Next time we're going to get a little bit into Docker Compose, as I said. Uh, that might be maybe another week or so before, uh, before I do it because I have to head out to that conference. So if you're coming to the conference, I hope to see you at my little session on Docker Compose. Uh, a lot of this will build up to that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comments section here on YouTube. I will try to answer them as best I can. If you have anything to add uh, or, or correct, please do that. I look forward to hearing from you and thanks for taking the time to watch this. Take care.